Hello, hello everyone. Welcome to my YouTube channel, We Are All Plants. My name is Jess. In case you don't know, I am a therapist located in South Florida and here I like to do plant chores and talk about all things plants. So that's what I'm going to be doing today. And today specifically, I have a rubber tree. Here we go. Um, here's my rubber tree. So this guy is not doing well. Um, mealybug infestation. And if you don't know what mealybugs are, they are these white powdery looking bugs. They're super disgusting. And here. Actually, I'm not even mad about it. Someone else is clearly having a worse day than I am. Anyways, I'm going to be tackling this situation. It's very infested. The plant looks sick. I thought it was a hydration issue, but upon further investigation, no, it is mealybugs, and I think they have really attacked this plant. So we're gonna be doing a full overhaul. I have with me rubbing alcohol, specifically the 70%, because that one is better for your plants instead of like the 90 or 95% one that you can also find. So I have this stuff and I have Q-tips <laughs> that I will be, I'm gonna grab more from these, but I do have Q-tips and I have rubbing alcohol. And yeah, we are going to be first trying to find the guy, the little suckers and killing them off. And then I'm going to be doing a whole wash down scenario just in case. And then I'm going to soak the roots in a little bit of water and like a incredibly diluted, like just a splash of this in the water with the bases, just to make sure that everything is clean, even off the roots, uh, because mealybugs will live on the roots as well. Not so much if they're buried like in the soil. This guy was growing roots, like aerial roots basically. Um, so there's definitely like some mealybugs on those roots that were not in the soil. We're just doing a complete overhaul on this poor plant and I'm really hoping it makes a recovery because I love this freaking rubber tree and I just want it to be okay. So yeah, that's also why I'm kind of like in a different place because I didn't want to handle such an intense infestation around my other plants to make sure it doesn't spread. So we are in my kitchen area where I will be able to clean and sanitize everything once I'm done. So yeah, we will hopefully prevent the spread. And the topic for today is actually really fun and exciting. I'm gonna be talking about how to make your therapy experience way more effective for you. So I'm gonna be giving you five things to think about if you are in therapy right now and you're just thinking, how can I get my money's worth? How can I make sure that I'm not in therapy forever? Or what are some things I can do to just kind of take my healing experience to the next level? So we're going to be talking about that. I think that you'll find that some of these things are actually pretty simple and some of them might be a little challenging. So definitely as per usual, leave a comment down below and just let me know, like, did you like some of these things? Do you have more things that you do that I didn't mention? Um, yeah, anything like that. I would love to chat with you and I would love to hear what you have to say about it. So let's get started. Okay, so <laughs> we're gonna start with this little guy. You are first in line. I'm going to be basically primarily talking about what to do in addition to therapy. So if you're not necessarily seeing a therapist right now and you're seeing some other people, that's totally fine. This will definitely still apply to you, um, but it also some of it might not. So I'm definitely, like I said, speaking to the therapy experience and as a therapist myself, I oftentimes make these suggestions that I'm giving to you, to my clients to give them kind of like an extra leg up and for them to be able to have the most effective healing journey they possibly can. So you're getting some like insider information right now, which is super fun and exciting. If you don't do these or don't have the capacity to do any of these right now, that's totally fine. None of these are requirements per se. Again, these are just suggestions. Um, take what you like, leave the rest kind of a situation. Um, not all these may apply to you. All of them might apply to you. This might be the greatest thing you've ever heard this week, 
whatever the case is for you. Um, yeah, just like I said, take what you like and leave the rest. Let's really quickly talk about just the therapy experience in general and why is it that we need to do more things, right? Like you might be sitting there thinking, okay, well, I already did the thing, like I'm already. I don't think that's thrips. No, that's not thrips. Ugh, gosh. Oh my gosh, sorry. I thought there were thrips on here. Anyways, so like I'm saying, when we're talking about like the average therapy experience, if you are seeing your therapist weekly, and that's if, not everyone does, um, but if you're seeing your therapist weekly, you're seeing your therapist for an hour a week. Now, because of the financial investment, sometimes we might accidentally get the notion that, oh, I'm investing this much money in something, so therefore it's just going to fix me, or it's just going to solve all my problems, or all I need to do then is focus on this one hour a week that I've either budgeted for or I've been investing in. The truth is, when we're talking about your healing journey, most of the time people will enter into therapy sometime in their early adulthood, especially these days. Sometimes you're a teenager and you enter into it, but regardless, there's a whole lifetime of situations that have been occurring up until the time you make your appointment for therapy. And that's a pretty big deal when you really sit down and think about the amount of things that have occurred in your life up until this point. That's a lot. It's a lot of things. A lifetime is a long time. When we think about what we've been through, what our experiences have been, positive or negative. So definitely something to keep in mind that you're already coming in with like a lot of stuff. And that's not to say like that's too much stuff, but we have to be realistic with the fact that you have a lifetime supply <laughs> of things to navigate. And so even if you're coming in for a very specific purpose, mental health symptoms are typically based off of a series of events. It's very rare when it's just one thing that's going on that's contributing to symptoms that you're experiencing. So that's just something to keep in mind. With that said, an hour a week is really limited in the grand scheme of things when you think about all the things that you're navigating, all the things you're interacting with that contribute to mental health symptoms. It's a lot. It's a lot to think about and it's a lot to take into consideration. So that's why I'm giving you these steps and why I'm kind of like really emphasizing these five things that you can do to take your healing to the next level. And again, just to really reiterate, I'm not telling you that your therapy sessions aren't enough. I'm not saying that you're not doing enough just by showing up to therapy. That is normally a huge feat in itself for most people. It's again, if you have the capacity for these things, I highly recommend them. The very first thing you should be doing, and honestly, if nothing else sounds great to you or nothing else sounds applicable to you, definitely just like zero in on this one topic. Um, take care of yourself <laughs> in between sessions. And I know that kind of sounds like a no brainer to you. I might be like, well, no duh. Or even you might be thinking, well, I'm going to therapy to learn how to take care of myself because I don't really know how. There are things you can be doing and things you really, again, that would be really beneficial to your healing experience. Oh, there are like kids running around playing outside. I don't know if you can hear them, but sometimes they're screaming, so. Just a heads up, if you're screaming kids, they're playing outside in my neighbor's pool. So <laughs> it's it's not, not a big deal. If you're in therapy for anything more than maintenance or preventative, even if you're doing that stuff, taking care of yourself while you're in therapy is going to be such a big deal because most of the time, at some point in your journey, you're going to have to visit difficult memories. You're going to have to maybe look at traumas or negative experiences in your life that bring up difficulties that kind of maybe you have to just like visit these places that you very intentionally haven't visited in a while because they're really hard to be in. Definitely figuring out, okay, so how do I take care of myself in between sessions then? How can I make sure that I am rested and ready to not only dive deep and be super effective in my therapy, but also giving myself a breather in between now and then so that I can just continue this work in a very sustainable manner and not just like a very temporary temporary just for a couple months sort of situation because it ends up only being what you can have the capacity for. Here are some examples of ways that you can better take care of yourself while you are in therapy. Number one, number one. This is number one for a very real reason. Number one is sleep. 
please, 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 please do not underestimate the power of good night's rest. Now, if you are sitting there telling me, okay, uh, I'd love to sleep, but I can't, <laughs> either because my mind is racing or because I have nightmares or very vivid dreams or whatever's going on, that's fine. I'm not saying that you have to just like magically figure out how to get a full eight hours or how many hours you need of sleep at night. Uh, that's not what I'm saying, but I am saying that it really needs to be a genuine focus when you are doing therapy work because therapy is already something that's really exhausting. It's already something that's taking a lot of emotional and mental energy. It's just, it's a big deal. And so sleep is going to be the thing that gives your body the energy and the capacity to continue through your healing journey and to be able to tackle all the things that you really need to tackle when you are in therapy. So if this is something that is an issue for you, definitely mention it to your therapist if you haven't already and try to come up with a game plan on how to sleep better because when we don't sleep, our brain doesn't function very well. And especially if you're doing therapy work, you really need your brain to be functioning well. The next thing I suggest doing is nurturing your body. Now, it can mean a variety of different things. You can nurture your body with supplements and vitamins. You can nurture your body with food. You can nurture your body with rest. There's a lot of ways to like nurture your body. So talk to your therapist, again, if that's something you struggle with and see if they have any suggestions they might be able to just like help you in the session or they might be able to refer you out to or someone who has more experience and someone who is actually very qualified to give you that information. I kind of already mentioned this, but another thing that I would suggest to do is rest. Rest, rest, rest. And resting does not mean sleeping, okay? I don't mean sleep. I mean two different things. You should be sleeping and you should be resting during the day. This doesn't mean you have to take a nap, but if it looks like taking naps, go ahead and take your nap. Sometimes it looks like reading a book. Sometimes it looks like laying in the grass for a couple minutes in the sunshine. Sometimes it looks like listening to music. Whatever rest looks like to you, definitely implement that daily, weekly, however you need to start that sustainable process. And again, you're like, I don't know how to rest. <laughs> I don't even know the first thing about resting. Talk to your therapist. They will be able to walk you through a plan to get you to a place to where you are resting without even having to consciously remind yourself to rest. Another thing, something along like a similar vein, start to create routines, especially when it comes to like a morning routine or a nighttime routine. And it doesn't have to be anything that's a long time. I'm not saying you have to sit there for hours and hours and get ready for bed, or you have to spend your entire morning journaling and drinking coffee and reading and working out and doing all these things. I mean, for me personally, my morning routine is working out. That's, that's pretty much it. Working out is the one thing that I love to do in the morning. It's a great start to my day. I just make sure that I make time for it. My workouts look differently. Sometimes I'm lifting heavy weights. Sometimes I'm stretching. Uh, it, sometimes I'm doing it for almost two hours. Sometimes I'm only gonna be moving for 15 to 30 minutes. There's no specific requirement. And again, if you hear this and you're like, well, this sounds really difficult or I don't even know where to begin. Not a problem, just talk to your therapist and they'll be able to help you figure out a plan for routines. But routines, what they do is they provide safety, they provide comfort, and so again, as you're going to be engaging in this pretty uncomfortable process of going to therapy, of looking back at your patterns and doing all these things, you're going to want to create as much safety and comfort as possible in your life. So creating routines is an excellent way to, again, kind of give yourself some of that safety and some of that security. Another thing that I can just segue into that I already mentioned is engaging in movement. Our bodies hold memories, they hold emotions. That's why when people who are very stressed, they sometimes have heart attacks or they sometimes have blood pressure struggles or anything along those lines. I've read in some statistic that I honestly, I don't remember the exact number. It was somewhere between 75 
to 85% if I'm remembering correctly, but it's absolutely over 50% of people who go to a doctor's office are there for stress-related reasons. And a doctor's office is a place for physical ailments. So your emotions and how you're navigating your mental health 100% affect your physical body. So making sure you're incorporating movement in your life is going to be so crucial on your healing journey. And it's similar to what I had mentioned earlier. I'm saying movement for a reason. I'm not using the word exercise. I'm not using any other word besides movement because this isn't about your physical appearance. This is about your mental health. This is about your emotions and about targeting certain brain chemicals or neurotransmitters. So when we talk about tackling these things, movement can really look like anything. Movement can look like slow, like a yin yoga class where you hold certain poses for almost five minutes at a time and you're just laying there, stretching, breathing, meditating. That's movement. movement Movement is taking a walk with a friend. Movement is even technically sitting at your desk and doing some shoulder and arm stretches to relieve some tension. It's incredibly important if you want to, again, really add some emphasis in taking care of yourself while you're doing therapy because you will be releasing, revisiting, discovering emotions that are being held in your body. And the more you can move your body and let those emotions flow in you and flow right back out of you, Brilliant, amazing, beautiful. And then the next thing on this list, actually the last thing on this list is read or listen to podcasts. The more information you are taking in and then you can even bring to your therapist saying, hey, I learned this thing and it really resonated with me. I love it when my clients are bringing me information and then we can talk about it or when they find something that really resonates with them and we can explore how to integrate that into their lives. It's a beautiful thing and it teaches you how to effectively like problems solve on your own. Most people aren't going to be in therapy for the rest of their life. Some people will, and that's totally fine. Like more power to you. Um, I've definitely been in therapy for quite a while, but that's not everyone's story and it doesn't have to be the way you navigate things. So the more you learn, okay, where are some trusted sources I can go to? What are some books? How do I begin to research and dig into my own mental health journey through the words and through the teachings of other people, even people who aren't your therapist? The more information you have the better and the more empowered you can feel and again like I mentioned it will just provide even more support and more effectiveness in your healing journey. It also sometimes reinforces what you're learning in therapy and I can't tell you how many times I will be talking to someone specifically a client and we'll be talking about a specific topic or we'll be reviewing coping skills or just anything and they will go find a podcast or they'll go find a book and someone else mentions that and the way that other person said or phrased something really resonated with my client. That's so beautiful. Your therapist is not the end all be all. They are not going to be the person who saves you. They're not going to have all the answers. And even if they're like the most brilliant person you've ever met and you love them and you love everything that they're saying, there could be someone else who's saying it in a different way or in another version or anything along those lines, like I said, that can really resonate with you and it can really help reinforce what you're already learning, making it that much stronger and making you that much more capable of navigating whatever it is that's in front of you. Secondly, your therapist is going to know a lot about mental health. Your therapist is gonna be able to give you information about emotions. They're gonna be able to talk about your thought process. They're going to be talking about your cognitive abilities. And depending on the specialty and depending on what training and stuff your therapist has had, it might vary on what services or what expertise or what insight they can offer. But one thing to definitely keep in mind is your therapist is not a physician. They're also not a psychiatrist. There's a whole other realm of mental health that can be really helpful to look into. And that is the biology of the brain. Like I mentioned earlier, you have neurotransmitters that are literally like brain chemicals that live inside of your physical brain and they affect your moods, they affect your emotions, they affect your anxiety, your depression, they affect so many different things, your fight, flight, or freeze. That's another key thing to be looking into when, again, you're exploring your own mental health. If you are sitting there thinking, oh my gosh, I literally can't 
even think of doing another thing. I can't afford to go see anyone else. That's 100% okay. But just keep in the back of your mind that if you have the capacity or if you have the ability to add something else in, you definitely do that because your mental health is not strictly only your thoughts and your emotions. It's absolutely physical and biochemical as well. The third thing I want to talk to you about is play. Really make sure that you are taking the time to enjoy your life. It doesn't always have to be serious. And sometimes we can fall into this trap where we're really, really focused in on trying to make sure that we are healing and we're processing and we're researching and we're learning and without taking the time to like go have fun with friends or to socialize or just going to like take a vacation. Like definitely do things that are enjoyable for you, that are fun for you. Within a similar vein, if you have accomplished big things, celebrate those big things. Really take a look at, okay, this is what I've experienced. This is what I've navigated. And so you know what? Like, I'm just gonna go out and do something fun for myself. I am going to call up my friends and say, hey, I made this progress in therapy today. It was so amazing. Or wow, like I've noticed these changes in myself already. If that's happening to you, definitely point them out to people, celebrate them. Even if it's just with yourself, just I often tell my clients, like, it doesn't have to be that big of a deal. Just go out and buy your favorite meal or tell someone who can, like, verbally celebrate with you. Just be very intentional. Because that's the other thing that can be messy about therapy, too, is that with making progress, it sometimes leads us to more discoveries and different discoveries that we didn't initially come in for or realize. And so it can almost feel like we're getting worse. But in reality, you're making so much progress that you are developing the capacity for more. You're developing the capacity to experience more, to dive deeper for all all these things. So always, always, always take a look at your progress and like I said, celebrate and just have fun. If you just started therapy today, still go out and have fun. Just really, again, just like lean in on that and don't neglect yourself. Kind of in a similar direction, something else that I like to mention to people a lot is try to notice when you are absorbing and releasing information. It is impossible to just constantly absorb information in a healthy way without ever releasing things as well. So for example, sometimes when we're in therapy, we're like I mentioned earlier, navigating really difficult things, revisiting difficult memories. And so you might end up experiencing big emotions that get stored in your body, but that's information you're absorbing. You're seeing it, you're digging deeper into it, you're absorbing it. And so if you're having a great therapy session, it's really intense, you're going in deep. How are you going to release some of that energy? How are you going to create space for more information? How are you gonna create space for deeper understanding of yourself? And part of that is kind of looking into what does releasing emotional energy look like for you? And what does it also look like to absorb? Same thing with knowledge and information. Sometimes we're taking in so much information that we don't really have time or the capacity to take in anything else. But that is a really big topic in itself. So I honestly might make a whole separate video on that, but that is just like a little tidbit for you. The fourth thing I want to talk to you about is to implement other methods of healing. Obviously, I think therapy is fantastic. And I think it's definitely something that people should absolutely engage with if they have the ability to do so. But along that same vein, therapy is not the only way your body heals. Like I mentioned earlier, therapy tackles a very specific part of your healing journey. Therapists have limits, not even just within their training, but also within their specialty. They focus, like I mentioned, on emotions, on cognitions, on thoughts. They may not be able to focus on your energy if you're someone who's spiritual. Whatever spirituality means to you, whatever that word is, there are people who can facilitate healing specifically for the spiritual part of yourself. There are people who specialize in the physical parts of you that also affect your mental health. Open yourself up to other methods of healing alongside your therapy journey. It will just take it to the next level. So again, just kind of try to look in into yourself and figure out, okay, is there something missing? What else can I strengthen and reinforce to make this therapy journey more effective for me? And then the last thing I'm going to be tackling, this is the fifth and final thing I have to say on this topic is community. Surround yourself with people who are supportive of your journey, supportive of your growth and healing and the change that comes along with that 
sometimes people are all about you going to therapy and they're all about you changing your ways until you start changing and until you start setting boundaries and until you learn more about yourself and then people can't really step all over you. This is something that you can talk to your therapist about and maybe this means finding different friends or finding new friends. Maybe this looks like simply setting boundaries. Maybe this looks like cutting people off entirely. Talk to your therapist figure out a game plan, they'll be able to help you figure out how to create a supportive community. Healing is not done in a vacuum. Please, 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 please listen to me when I say this. I'm not saying that you need to rely on other people for your healing, but if we try to heal in a vacuum, first off, for most people that doesn't exist. We have coworkers, we have friends, we have family members that we interact with. Finding a community that aligns with you, finding a community that's supportive for you is so important. Try to find that healthy balance between making sure that you are being supported by people, but that you're not relying on people per se for your validation, for your healing, all of those kinds of things. Okay, so that's pretty much all I have to say on that topic. I still have a pretty long way to go. I have one little guy left. And then I'm going to, like I mentioned earlier, soak the roots. And I'm gonna clean out the nursery pot that this guy came in, disinfect it, everything. I've already killed several mealybugs. I was definitely correct. There were a lot on this poor plant. Yeah. Also, just kind of a heads up, I'm not a plant <laughs> influencer. I don't want to give the impression that I'm some like magic plant guru. There are so many people out there who know so much more about plants than I do. I do hope you enjoy this. I hope you do learn some things from this, but I'm never going to pretend like I know everything about plants. Like I've mentioned with this guy, this one's completely infested with mealybugs and I didn't think that was the issue when it is. And I also want to just encourage you, if you are someone who has fallen in love with plants, if you're someone who who's trying to learn more. There's no such thing as like the perfect plant parent. Plants are things that are alive. They have literally like their own lifespan. They have their own growth journey and sometimes their own healing journey if they're invested with pests um, or anything like that. It's not about keeping them perfect. It's just about maintaining them and making sure that they are having their needs met and then they're growing and thriving. So if your plants are doing that, that's amazing. And if some of them die along the way, that's okay. I can't even tell you the amount of plants that I've killed. Uh, yeah, because that's just the way it goes sometimes. And especially for me, I'm trying to learn more about plants. Also, sometimes my capacity for how I can care for my plants changes, and that might be the same for you. So I hope this is encouraging for you. I can't tell you how many times I will post about my plants or I will say something about plants, and I will almost always get a DM or a comment on social that will be like, oh my gosh, I don't have a green thumb. Wow. Neither do I. <laughs> I don't have a green thumb. I have done a ton of research. I watch other YouTubers who exclusively talk about plant care. I Google search all the time to learn how to care for my plants. In fact, the reason why I know how to take care of mealybugs is because I did a Google search and found out that you need rubbing alcohol to kill them. So that's what I did. I don't have a natural ability. I haven't woken up and just like understand plants. It's taken a lot of learning and I'm still learning. I would definitely not call myself an expert in any way, shape, or form. But yeah, so I hope this was all helpful. I hope you feel encouraged. Please subscribe if you liked this and you want more content like this. Please like the video if you liked it or a thumbs down if you didn't. Whatever. I always appreciate the feedback. Like I mentioned in the beginning, comment down below if you have other things that you do to make your healing journey more effective. Let me know. Or if you resonated, if you really liked something, if you didn't like something I mentioned, I would love to chat with you and pick your brain and figure out what you are thinking or feeling about this content. Thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate you. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. See you later.